Welcome to chapter 18, reactions of the alpha carbon of carbonyl compounds. Uh, in this chapter, we're largely going to see um, deprotonation of the alpha carbon in order to create enols and enolates, uh, which is the subtitle of this chapter if you look in the textbook. And we're basically going to be using enols and enolates as nucleophiles for the majority of this chapter, um, mostly to do regular nucleophile things that we've seen um, in organic one and two. And then in chapter 19, we'll expand on that. So chapter 19 is more of a just complex uh, continuation of chapter 18. One of the first big ideas of chapter 18 is that alpha hydrogens, which would be hydrogen atoms on an alpha carbon, tend to be much more acidic than we would expect. So I'm going to review some pKa's that you already know so far. When we first learned about pKa's, we talked about alkanes having a pKa of about 50. So this hydrogen is very difficult to remove uh, in order to deprotonate this carbon. The pKa of a hydrogen on an alkene is going to be about 44. And the pK of a hydrogen on a terminal alkyne is about 25. Now, um, the pK that's sitting on a ketone or an aldehyde uh, is going to be about 19 to 20 for both of these. And I realize it's kind of a narrow range, uh, but most of the values will fall in that area. And notice uh, for the aldehyde, we are talking about the alpha hydrogen, so the one on the alpha carbon, and not the aldehyde hydrogen. That's not what we're going to pull off. Now for an ester, the pK of a hydrogen on the alpha carbon of an ester is uh, about 25, so more similar to an alkyne. But when you start looking at these dicarbonyl compounds where you have a single alpha carbon, between the two carbonyls, that's gonna drop the pK significantly. We're gonna bring it down to about nine to 11. And when you have a diester, um, for example, this one is diethylmalinate. I'm giving you the name because this one's gonna come back. The pK of this one is um, actually not approximate, it's 12.9. So those can be a little higher than a diketone or a dialdehyde. There are a couple different reasons that these alpha hydrogens are so much more acidic than we expect. One of them is that there is a dipole pulling electron density away from that carbon. So we have more electron density on the oxygen, and we know that our carbonyl carbon is always partially positive, but we are pulling electron density away from the alpha carbon as well. Uh, when you look at your dicarbonyl compounds, it's pretty clear why these are so much more acidic even than just a ketone or an aldehyde. And that's because this carbon is losing a ton of electron density as that all ends up getting focused on the carbonyl oxygens. The other really big reason is because of the structure of the resulting anion. So if we actually do take a base and deprotonate this structure to create the conjugate base, we create an enolate, which is a carbanion. We have a negative charge on the alpha carbon. Now, creating a carbanion is not great. We usually don't do that, but this carbanion is resonance stabilized through the oxygen. So this is the alternate form of the enolate, where it shows you that um, the electron density can be carried on the oxygen. Now for the dicarbonyl compound, it becomes even more interesting. If you pull off this hydrogen and put those electrons onto the alpha carbon, you create an enolate on the alpha carbon. Now this is going to have resonance with the carbonyl to the left and the carbonyl to the right. Let's just push those electrons all the way over there. So we have a couple different resonance forms and we're showing that the electron density can be delocalized on either one of those carbonyls. 
So that's going to contribute to making this alpha carbon even more acidic. Now remember, one of the things that we learned in OCHEM 1 is that when you create the conjugate base of a compound, if that conjugate base is resonant stabilized or stabilized in some way, that is going to increase the acidity of the compound that it came from, right? So if removing this proton, this alpha hydrogen, creates a stable conjugate base, that's going to make it more acidic. So that's the situation that we have here. Now that's going to be the same situation for the aldehyde as well. Um, now the ester had a higher pKa than that of the aldehyde um, or the ketone. And the reason why is when we pull off uh, this proton and create our conjugate base, we still have the same type of resonance form as we had before, where the carbanion is in resonance with the uh, pi electrons of the carbonyl. But we also have another contributing factor here. We have another oxygen, and this one is not going to be able to pull electron density towards it. It is actually electron donating. So instead of delocalizing electrons, it's going to contribute to the problem. So this brings us to the idea of uh, keto and enol tautomers. So tautomer is kind of a new word to us. I think it was kind of thrown around in chapter 17, but not super explained. So ketones or aldehydes in the keto form and enols are easily converted in acid or base. And this process of interconversion is called tautomerization. So um, for example, in acid, we would start off our mechanism by picking up a proton from hydronium. We're in acid, so we have to protonate something. Let's make that a little cleaner. So we're gonna protonate our ketone. Now the protonation of that carbonyl is going to actually increase the acidity of the alpha carbon. And that would bring us to our enol. Now this process is reversible. So uh, the enol is capable of picking up a proton and working its way back the way it came from. I'm going to erase that so it doesn't become confusing. You can do the same thing in base. Uh, the base mechanism uh, is basically the same. You're just not starting off with a protonation. So instead, we're going to start off with a deprotonation. So we're going to take away this alpha hydrogen, and that creates our enolate. And remember, this has a resonance form. And if we wanted to, we could say that it picks up a hydrogen from water. Now, normally in base, you're not really going to see the enol form. You're actually going to end up stopping at the enolate. The enol is typically only seen in acid. So the process of going between the keto and enol forms is tautomerization.